I'm here at the Vale training grounds on a very cold and frosty morning. You can certainly tell that the festive period is now right around the corner. And coming up on today's In the City, we have the first of what's probably going to be many festive activities involving some of the team. The boys have just finished training, so we're over to James Robry to preview Saturday's game against Watford. Robes a very cold and chilly morning this morning for training. Yeah. How are the boys looking out there? And they're looking sharp, to be fair. Uh, we worked hard all week and the shapes that we want to hopefully play on Saturday. It'll be a tough game, but um, they were extremely hard, to be fair to them. How are you looking to approach the game against Watford then? Like any other game, really, whether it's home or away. Um, obviously, some tactical issues may, may come into the into the picture, but we'll, we'll work on certain things like we have done, um, and hopefully they'll come to fruition on Saturday. And the away form has been somewhat of a, an issue. Uh, so far this season, home form of course being a lot better. Where do you pinpoint the, the, the downfalls on the road? Different people got different opinions on it, um, but if you look from our perspective, our last game against Birmingham, we kept our, our first clean sheet in a while, so that's the basis that, that we'll work off and hopefully we can take that to Saturday's game. Is it something that they're just going to have to get over in their own heads and get that monkey off their shoulders? They're top players and they'll get over it and they'll get on with it and I'm sure they'll, um, that hopefully will make a difference on Saturday. Great news this week as fan favourite and community champion Craig Noon signed a contract extension up until the summer of 2018. So let's hear from Nooney himself. So Craig, you've been here for two years so far, you're in your third season. Looking ahead, what are you hoping to achieve both personally and as a team? Yeah, personally I just want to try and improve myself and be a better player, obviously, and help the team out a bit more. Um, Team-wise, I, I think We've got a team that will be challenging to get back in the Premier League and that's what I want and that's my ambition is to get back in the Premier League with Cardiff and hence the reason of signing the new contract. As a player it must be a massive confidence boost knowing that the manager wants to keep you around and you are in his long term plans. How are you feeling in your own form yourself? Yeah, I'm delighted with the manager the way he's handled it and he's pulled me in and spoke to me and told me that and part of his plans and I was delighted with that and I think um, yeah I'm just looking forward to working under him and being part of the team and stuff. On Thursday this week, Cardiff City Foundation launched its new international development programme and being Thanksgiving, the day was well suited to the club's first overseas delivery, which will take place in Arizona in March 2015. Under-21's goalkeeper and US international Charlie Horton joined pupils from Ninian Park Primary School at the House of Sport to help out with the event. I think any time we, uh, we can get the club out there and get the exposure for the club out there, I think it's really going to be to the benefit of the club club like Cardiff, uh, it's been in the Premier League, it's been around, uh, I think it, it'll draw attention from, from the locals. International Development Manager Michael Haywood told us more about Arizona and the plans for the new year. We've got a seven day elite player camp for boys and girls aged between 12 and 14. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of athletic development, um, some position specific training and then um, a lot of evening classes where we'll be talking to them through um, analysis and how to reach right. So just to display to those players in America how a professional academy works uh, in the UK um, and hopefully um, develop some players along the way. Members of the Cardiff City squad got well into the Christmas spirit this week to raise awareness for the Save the Children Christmas Jumper Appeal that will take place on December the 12th. On Tuesday, over 500 children took part in the school's chess tournament at Cardiff City Stadium. 46 teams entered and it was checkmate for the Dell Primary School from Chepstow, who were overall winners on the day. A good victory for the Academy boys this week as they beat Millwall 3-0. The development side lost out to Exeter City 3-4, but they're next in action on Monday evening at Cardiff City Stadium against Bristol City, kick-off at 7pm. Over to Futsal and the A-team atop of their league after a 4-0 win over Shrewsbury. And the B-team beat Leicester City 7-4 to take them up to second place in their league. Cardiff City women managed a season best on Sunday, beating Aberyst with Town Ladies with a whopping 11-0. We caught up with Peter Whittingham after training this week to look ahead to Saturday's visit to Vicarage Road. It'll be a big game. 
<clears throat> we know they're a good team, but we've been doing well at home, so it's about taking that form onto, onto the road now. We, um, we're, we've got, we're full of confidence at the minute, we're scoring goals, but as, as you say, we need to win on Saturday. And Wits has scored a number of spectacular goals this season and over the years, but can he pick out a favourite? I think the Barzi one was nice for me, obviously the ball across I think from J Manuel Thomas at the time and just kept the ball up and, and managed to volley it and, and it went into the corner so it, it was a nice goal for me but to, as you say I've scored, scored some quite nice ones. He's sent a new deal in the summit, the fellow who's trying to kick balls you over there, Craig New, <laughs> has signed a new deal himself yesterday, how good is that, how big a boost? Yeah, I mean, brilliant. Been new, new, new's been brilliant since he's come back, it just brings a breath of fresh air to everyone, he's a great lad to have around the place, and, and you see from his performances, especially on, on Friday, how good he is and how big he is for the team, he seems to go past people as if they're not there, and hopefully that'll continue. And another fan favourite return to see us on Friday, Macca. You caught up with him there after the game for a little bit. What was it like seeing him? Yeah, I spoke to Macca after the game. He's in good spirits, always keeping an eye out on Cardiff like he does. He was here for so long. But he's he, he seems good. He seems happy and, and long, long may that continue. So I'm here at Toys R Us joined by Fabio and Pilks who have kindly given up their afternoon for a bit of fun in the store today. Now next Tuesday is the Christmas party for Rookwood Hospital and today what the boys are going to do is they're going to get involved in a trolley dash and grab as many toys off the shelves as they can. Now they're both given 30 seconds to start with but we're going to start off boys playing three simple board games and you can each earn yourself an extra 15 seconds and then go head to head so you can get the most presents. Cool? Ready? Ready? Let's go. Round one, that children's favourite pop-up pirate. And the first to pop up, the pirate loses, basically. I have to push them right in. I have to push them right in. <laughs> Fabio didn't quite get it though. He thought he'd won by popping up the pirate. So that's 1-0, making Pilks the pirate popping pioneering person. So that's an additional 15 seconds for him. On to round two, Hungry Hungry Hippos. First tweet the golden ball wins. No, no, one, one for you. I just have one. Yeah. Oh, yellow. Just cause to celebrate this time as he did win. <laughs> That's Fabio and Pilks, both with 15 seconds added on the clock. On to the final game, and it's Buckaroo. Basically, boys, don't buck it up. You ready? So, yeah. I go first, yeah? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. You gotta be real careful. <laughs> Steady, hell. <laughs> Bit of cheating going on there, but it's all fun and games, so we gave it to Pilks. On to the trolley dash, where the trolley totalling the most is the winner. After that 2 1 victory to Anthony, he's earned himself an extra 30 seconds, which means you get a minute, and Fabio, you get 45 seconds. Is that okay, boys? Yeah. Are you ready? Steady, go. Fabio! I go here. Off to a flying start. Pilk's catching Fabio up in the Lego section. Fab's raiding the board games. A new fan of Pop Up Pirate, I see. Fifty seconds gone, and the trolleys are filling right up. <laughs> so that's time up for Fabio on forty-five seconds. He has to stop, but Pilks is still going strong. A few robot dogs in there to add to his trolley. And that's time up for Pilks too. Great effort from both filling their trolleys to the brim, all for a fantastic cause. Now off to the checkout to total them up. Happy. 
So at the end of a successful shop, Fabio managed a whopping 518 pounds, 15 pence. Well done, Fabio. But bettered by Anthony, who managed an incredible 794 pounds, 96 pence. Anthony, congratulations. How do you feel? Yeah, I feel great to win. Um, obviously, if Fab you know, was at a disadvantage, he couldn't reach into the trolley to put the toys in because <laughs> he's so small, but, um, but I'll take the win nevertheless. And all for a great cause, of course. Yeah, it's for a great cause and um, you know, it'll be more than worth it coming down here for an hour today. Um, you know, it was a bit of fun today, but you know, the, real, the real worth will be next Tuesday when we see the kids' faces um, you know, receiving the toys. Well, thank you both. And Fabio, you know how we do here on In The City. Um, a little forfeit for you. We're going to take a trip out to Anthony's car, which you're going to clean head to toe inside and outside. How do you feel? I no comments. <laughs> no, sir, no, no comments. Comment. And just for proof, being the great sport that he is, Fab stayed exactly as he was told. Good there, Fab. <laughs>